For many of us, spirituality is just the, the quest to find essence or true meaning and to really just connect with a higher consciousness. Welcome to the Bring Me To Life podcast. Connecting with your spirituality is very important in this life. By becoming mindful of all of that, you can realize where you are and if that is leading you to where you want to go. Listen to the little simple things because it's those little simple things that are going to shift you vibrationally in such a way that will prepare you to become very intuitively minded and ready to step forward on the next part of your path. I hope you can feel the love that's inside you, that's inside me, that connects us. Well, I hope you are having a, a great day because we're going to get into some podcasting. Oh, podcasting. My favorite pastime of millennials. <laughs> Yeah, I'm excited because, it, like, when we first started the podcast, it was so nice because it was more, like, just kind of, like, free talking and just really open discussion, and um, we've tried to, like, update it and, and do all these things along the way, but just, like, kind of getting it back to just, like, free talking, and we do have a, a topic to talk about, but it's nice to just, kind of like, come together and just, like, talk about all the stuff and, like, have space for people with open minds and open hearts. Mm. Yeah, man, super line with that. And because like we're we're having in our own ways open minds, open hearts, and then speaking from that level of presence, um, it conveys that opens that space for others, and anyone who comes in uh, definitely feels much more safe and aligned to experience that. Mm -hmm. Definitely, I know in like in Cumberland, and even when I lived in Michigan, like there's a lot of people who 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 were open minded they were learning all the stuff about spirituality and, and life and and there's we think because we're in like this community with all these people who who are like us and are open minded and are learning all these things that it's like that everywhere but once you get back out into the into quote unquote the real world um it, it's a different story and you start to notice that not everybody is you know awake to the same kind of information which i think is okay i don't think we're better than anybody but um it's kind of like this picture that i see on the internet where it's piccolo and he's pumping gas and it's like that feeling after you come from a festival where it's like oh okay. yeah the guy dressed up piccolo. yeah yeah what is the caption for it um i don't know something about like coming home from a festival or something Oh, yeah, like how it feels when you come home from a consciousness festival. Yeah, um, and it can kind of be like that, like a really, like you feel out of place and 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 people maybe stare at you, uh, but that's okay. That's part of life, and we're all, we're all together. We create this kind of interesting world. I think Earth is like super, super interesting, like we could we could feel the most suffering that we can anywhere or we could feel the most joy. It's like, it's up to us yeah. and it's kind of crazy. Yeah. All like all potential is there. And we definitely all come from kind of how we were chatting about last week, how we all come from our own different backgrounds, et cetera, in this melting pot that mm -hmm. we still have the potential to, in a way go either way and even though we may become eccentric and far off the beaten path it's still very much all right here and you know i wake up in the morning i go to sleep at night i brush my teeth you do that and in our Hopefully. humanness we're still all <laughs> we're still all connected in that way Mm -hmm. definitely um well it's kind of, it's interesting I, I i saw this article and it said that when people have a spiritual awakening like their their ego gets bigger because they feel like they're you know they're higher than everybody else or like they're you know they're um more special or whatever 
Um, so like before we get into these kinds of topics and everything, I just want everybody to know no matter where you are in life, like we're all, we're all a part of source, you know, we're all bringing our own perspective into the fold. And just because maybe one person seems more enlightened than another, it, it, we're, we're all the same. Like nobody's, nobody's better than anybody else. Yeah, we all have, we all coalesce and meet in the foundation of silence. And no one can be, you, you can't like, I'm better at silence than you, or <laughs> I'm better at love than you. I'm better at being compassionate and respectful than you. Like, it's not even like that. A respectful person wouldn't say that. It's more like inside they may be like, oh, that person just hasn't learned yet. And that's fine. And then we hold space for them. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And I think it's good to, to, to be that for people who are just holding space and, and getting that out of the way. Today's topic is about living in the moment. Um, June is, is about claiming your power and living in the moment is, is part of that. And so just kind of getting out of the way, like, no matter where you're at in life, you're where you need to be doing what you need to do. And like the Buddha says, um, you know, every path is the right path, like separation is an illusion and all that stuff. So with that out of the way, let's kind of get into this power of living in the moment and, and presence. I know that you wanted to talk about presence. So what is presence to you? Presence is isness. Presence is aliveness, and presence was there before thoughts. Presence was there before feelings, and a tree doesn't know it's a tree. It's just present to the moment and what it is, and maybe a silly example because it's just a tree, you know, but when we're in our flow and we are you could say aligned, we're just present. And in that space, we are very much so very capable to handle whatever is in front of us and whatever we're choosing to do. There's so much like presence. You can go so deep with presence and there's ways to recognize presence. And how we can do that is relaxing our attention beyond thoughts and labels, if only for a few seconds. And then recognize that which remains in that clear space. Another way to recognize presence is to ignore thoughts, be uninterested in what they offer you. And then again, recognizing that which remains in that clear space. It seems that through our, at least in the Western culture anyways, through our overstimulated world that we are living in and how culture is and society, etc. Our focus draws to a bunch of different things rapidly. And for presence to be revealed, our focus actually needs to calm down and in a way expand and in the absence of our thoughts, it's definitely easier to notice the aliveness that's present in this moment. In presence, you would say something like, you exist. I am. I exist. And here is where automatic thinking can transform into conscious noticing. And... Um, I have a few things here to read as a, a contemplation exercise. Do you think this would be a good time to go through that? It'd only take a couple minutes. Absolutely. Let's do it. All right, for sure. So um, this is a contemplation exercise for what is presence to assist us in experiencing presence. So let us take a deep breath as in a relaxing sigh. So we can let go just a little more. And let us lightly contemplate the following as we are open-minded and 
beyond being right or wrong. Presence is the essence of everything that exists. Now just pause here and take this in. Presence is the essence of everything that exists. Presence is the foundation of all that is. Presence is that which everything has in common with everything else. Isness. Presence is noticed as the sense you have when you relax the mind and notice. I exist. Presence is felt as the sense I am. Presence is beingness. Presence is isness itself. Presence is always here and now. Presence is free from thoughts, but includes thoughts in its open presence. Presence is free from feelings, yet includes feelings in its open presence. Presence is free from mind, but includes mind. Presence is free from the body, but includes the body. Presence remains unaffected by the changes of life. Presence itself is formless, but expresses itself as all form. Presence is the only consistency of creation. There is nothing else for forms to be made of. Presence is like gold shaped into many different kinds of jewelry. Regardless of form, it is still gold. Presence is like clay, shaped into many different shapes. Regardless of the form, it's still clay. Presence is the ocean. Experiences are its waves. There are no waves without the ocean. And finally, presence is the expressed energy of the infinite one, the absolute. So here's just a very brief, simple meditation on presence that we can tune into. And through our contemplations, and considerations of these words, that still deep space will continue to reveal itself as presence. And how we can cultivate this space on our own after this, after we view this audio is, I guess this is a little homework too already. I was going to bring this in at the end, but our homework for this is for 3 to 12 times a day. Might seem like a lot, but just bear with me. Breathe deeply and let go of all attention for just 2 to 5 seconds. And feel this space of presence. And that's all I'd like to share on that for this moment. Beautiful. And... Um... Let's make sure to remind people at the end about this homework. Yes, definitely. <laughs> um, we also have a meditation that will play on the on the moment, um, and it's one that I did. Um, it's a short one, but I I think this is such a, a cool and awesome and powerful topic. And you talked a lot about um, like it's gold jewelry. It comes in different shapes and and all that stuff. Um, I think it's it's like a it's like a superpower to have basically because with your presence you can do so much um for an example uh, last night I was working on uploading an article I did on astral projection and astral projection is using your presence to 
to go out of your body and into another realm, another world, another state of being. And to be able to do that with just your awareness and like just your presence is like incredible to me. It's like you're like you said, you're not just your body. It's like part of it, but it's not that. And it's it's more than that. So just like being able to be present is extremely powerful. Uh, I remember there's there's been a few times where I, I say I, I did a few psychedelics. And the thing that I remember most from the psychedelics is how in the moment they made me. Like they made me so present that magic started happening all around me. And even without any kind of psychedelics, I've noticed just being fully aware and fully present in the moment similar things start to happen as if you were on psychedelics because your vibration is so powerful. It's incredible. I think, I think this is awesome. And I really loved your little meditation there. Yeah. That's so crucial. What you said too, about the psychedelics, because, and, and presence, presence is very quint essentially linked with consciousness and also with vibration. And I really enjoyed what you said about the psychedelics because the psychedelics, not only do they change the physical biology, which helps our nervous system, anxiety, stress, sensations, etc., that could have thoughts and feelings come up, but they also work on a non-physical level with spirit and really assist our awareness to have somewhat more of a you know, non-cramped terminal to travel between destinations. And just like, it, so powerful. And then it, it can be cultivated too, like this, just like you said, it doesn't need psychedelics to to be experienced. Presence is, we, we are inside presence. So wherever we go, it's only but a portion of it. And we don't even need certain things we don't need a a healthy body we don't need drugs or medicine we don't need any of this stuff and we can build this skill by continuing to go beyond thoughts and feelings Mm -hmm. i would like to have a little kind of uh, story hour where Maybe we tell each other a story about enjoying the moment. And and while you think of a story of you enjoying the moment, I wanted to talk to everybody about an experience that I had when I went to Hawaii um, in 2013. I, I got back from a really crazy epic adventure with like 12 other people where we went cross country with no money and did all these crazy things. Um, and then I came back to Michigan because it was really hard to be out there for, I think we were out there for six or seven months. So, um, I ended up coming back home to Michigan. And when I got to Michigan, I had taxes left over from the jobs I had before I left. And I used my tax money to get a plane ticket to Hawaii. Um, so when I got to Hawaii, I didn't have a lot of money left. I had maybe a little bit, but not really much. And, I didn't have really any plan on what to do or where to go when I got there. So I kind of just like let it all happen, let it all unfold. And so when I was there, I did some hitchhiking. I got to a beach and I, with me, I had like a, a backpack. I had some clothes. I had my journals and then I had a cell phone that I could call people on in case I needed help. So one night I was sleeping underneath of... I guess the lifeguard station on the beach and I was underneath of that. There's, um, I noticed through the night there's another person who kind of started sleeping and I was like, that's fine, whatever. Like as long as he doesn't do anything. And, um, I fell asleep and then I woke up to like my head moving and I look up and like my bag is gone (laughs) and I talked to the cops and they never actually found the guy. And I looked across the beach for like my stuff because hopefully maybe he dropped it. But I didn't find any of that. So literally, I just had like the clothes on my back. And um really, that was basically it. So I kind of walked around and didn't know what to do. 
And I didn't I didn't have my journal so I couldn't I couldn't write about this stuff. I didn't have a cell phone so I couldn't talk to anybody about it. And I literally just had to like kind of sit there. And one thing that it did for me was that it really brought me into the moment because I didn't have the distraction of being able to um get on my phone or like write something down or all I could do was just sit there and kind of stare and I started looking at the the water and I I noticed these humpback whales like shooting water out um and then I I noticed like a gecko on the tree and like and from that and from that moment on I really I gained like this ability to to be anywhere to have nothing and to really just be open to the moment and to experience whatever the moment brought and it definitely has helped me a lot in life because like a lot of times like something simple like um somebody goes and gets groceries and then their their husband or their partner or whatever like stays back because they don't want to do all that and then they're like super bored and frustrated and all this stuff and I think that's okay but for for me getting to do what I got to do in Hawaii and it was extreme way to learn I I don't think I recommend it to people um, but it definitely helped me to enjoy the moment no matter what was going on around me no matter what was no matter what I had with me you know it's it's one thing to be able to find safety in in something or somebody, but when you find safety within yourself, that's, that's really the key because you could be anywhere, you could have anything and you'll be, you'll be good because you're safe within yourself. You're able to live in the present no matter what you have or what you don't have. So, um, that's one, that's one experience that I had that really helped me to live in the moment. That is beautiful and marvelous. And, also, I want to touch on it. what you said is after this lovely gentleman had helped himself to your items, um, let's keep up hope that he, he gives them back eventually. Mm-hmm. But you, you said all you could do is sit there and stare. Mm-hmm. And it's funny you say it like that. Well, it's not funny, but it's interesting you say it like that because a lot of people they would give themselves other options such as complaining and feeling horrible and, you know, scared or very angry and all of these other things. And you, it seemed you had already developed somewhat of a skill with presence, whether you knew it or not, and able to accept what was happening. And it seems here you were also taking your power back and being empowered to at the very least not give the situation any more energy than it would need and it gifted you the opportunity of presence and it's beautiful that it made such an impact on you because it definitely it seemed like it shifted your perceptions of what was happening because you were able to notice more of what was going on Mm -hmm. yeah it really really like showed me that once you strip away all the material aspects of life, all the physical aspects of life, that's, that's what you have left is your presence. And it's a gift to have. And because of, of who we are and the, the, the planet and the dimension that we live on, we have free will. So with our presence, we can use it for anything, you know? And so I'm, I am just really grateful that I used it to begin to learn how to enjoy just being regardless of anything that I had, regardless if I had friends around me, regardless if I had something to write on, like I was content just being, and that was such an amazing experience. Mm, That's marvelous. Thank you for sharing. Absolutely. You got any, you got any moments of enjoying the moment yeah i would actually love to share i just have a question um so just for those of you listening silaman and i had met a few years ago and then a few months after we had met uh, he invited me to this consciousness festival called three days of light (laughs) and thank you scott for all the the hard work that you put into that if you ever end up listening to this scott love thank you and so at this time years ago 
I I was still very much kind of, you know, not present and repeating thoughts and repeating emotions and generally being focused on these other things that don't necessarily produce um, openness and relaxation and all of these things. I was still very much in the mental thing happening. And anyways, at this festival, I gave myself the opportunity to really open up and meet others and see what was going on. And it was kind of like my first my first journey outside of my norm. And through just doing my best at that time to be present and open, there were so many others who were already doing this that just from me opening myself up to the consideration for what's new or what else could be or just opening up to receiving... I was able to actually receive presence from others who were already doing that. And it kind of really opened up my heart and grounded in this very high teaching of presence. And from there, it just was like such an amazing experience because I, for the whole three days that we were there, uh, well, not for the whole time, but for the most part, presence was very much there and just like how you said you were sitting there and all you could do was stare I was there and all I could do was be and it wasn't like the mind was was there and maybe I'm not using the proper words maybe I'm being a little out there I don't really know exactly how to (laughs) express it but the releasing just like how you released your belongings. <laughs> I had released thoughts and emotions and feelings. And, and not that I wasn't feeling things. It was more like it was at a deeper level. It was more like it was a deeper version of myself that was beyond any of the things that I had once held on to. And with my relinquishing of control, I guess is what I'm trying to express, relinquishing of control. I had open hands to receive this presence. And in this long, drawn-out metaphor, uh, I think something to take away here is, is our items don't make us. Our thoughts don't make us. We aren't our emotions. And the present moment is there to be experienced. Like, before you were sitting there, just being able to stare... And noticing the beautiful water that was already there as that and we only find ourselves coming into what is already there when we are ready and when we choose to i think that's a very interesting thing to notice mm-hmm. yeah there, there's a lot of sacrifices that you have to make to live in the moment but i think it, it's definitely worth it yeah. um when so i first true. When I first got here to the mountains, I remember how beautiful they were, and it was incredible. And because Shannon, my partner who who lives here and has lived here for her whole life, she said she didn't even notice them most of her life until I got here. And she was like, wow, they really are beautiful. And it was because it was just like in her normal environment that... Um, and, you know, culture is not set up to to have us kind of look around and be present. So once I, I got here and kind of showed her the the beauty of the mountain, she began to notice it. And I think that's that's pretty interesting. You know, somebody could live somewhere their entire life and not notice something so beautiful until somebody comes by and, like, shows it to them. Yeah, that contrast. Because you, you weren't raised there. You didn't live there. And... You were almost like a child when you saw it, perhaps, so innocent and fresh. And I think that freshness really is what presence can bring to anything. You know, whatever things we we may feel as mundane or here we go again or maybe something that we love just kind of lost its zest, whether it be an item, an experience or a person or something. Through presence, the newness, the freshness, 
the essence of that thing or things or something will reveal itself once more. Mm -hmm. It's it's kind of like almost like magic in a way where when you be yeah. when you become more present, you start to you start to notice more synchronicities. Like life begins to work for you instead of against you. I feel that totally. It's like we almost get, it seems like it's almost like life is going a certain direction anyways. And when we can get out of the way or, or really use this skill of presence, we can, we can walk the direction we may normally be dragged. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So I think this would be a good time to get into our meditation um, and everybody can get a little practice into into um, getting into the moment and, and being present. And then after that, we'll come back and then talk a little bit more. Is that okay? Right on, man. That sounds perfect to me. Okay. Then uh, give me a second while I set this up. If you have anything else you want to say before the meditation, go ahead while I get it all set up. Uh, yeah, let's just uh, return to our breath and and uh, begin to breathe deeply. Start off as a relaxing sigh and just kind of letting the teachings of presence be there and continuing to notice what's happening with the body. Going from the top down as we kind of just put awareness on our head and Relaxing our jaw, relaxing our eyelids and our tongue. Just traveling down and notice our shoulders. Just very gently go back and down a little bit. And just traveling through the rest of the body, noticing our hips, our knees and feet. And just trying to breathe into the whole thing as we sit a little more deeply into presence. The time that you can affect the most change in your life is in this present moment. There is no guarantee with the future, as it's always changing. The past is gone. By bringing your full awareness to the moment, you attain your full power as a co-creator of your reality. If you are looking to get in touch with the present moment and all the magic that comes with it, this is the right meditation for you. We'll start by becoming mindful of our breath. This is a simple exercise that you can do anywhere at any time to bring your awareness into the moment. Notice how being mindful of your breath helps you to relax. Begin to notice any thoughts floating through your mind. Are any of them about the future? Are any of them about the past? Notice which ones are about the present moment. Begin to focus your awareness on the present, letting go of the past, 
letting go of the future. Anytime your mind drifts, bring it back to the moment. Allow yourself to stay in this present moment by becoming aware of any senses from your environment. Stop for a moment and notice how the clothes that you're wearing feel on your skin. What does the fabric feel like? Feel the temperature of the air surrounding you. Relax into the awareness of your environment. Let yourself know it's okay to just be yourself as you are right now. All of your problems melt away. Let go of anything that's happened in your past. Feel the present moment becoming richer and more vibrant. And notice how you're feeling physically, emotionally, or spiritually. And now with your awareness fully in this present moment, begin to claim your power. Repeat these affirmations along with me. Staying in the present moment. I create space in my life for all that inspires me. Create space in my life for all that inspires me. I 
I create space in my life for all that inspires me. When I am true to myself, I align with my purpose. When I am true to myself, I align with my purpose. When I am true to myself, I align with my purpose. I have the power to make changes that will improve my life. I have the power to make changes that will improve my life. I have the power to make changes that will improve my life. If you enjoyed this experience so far, see yourself becoming more and more in tune with the present moment in your daily life. Begin to finish up as we come near the end of the meditation. Notice how you feel now after doing this meditation. Being aware of your energy, your mind, your body, your spirit, the present moment. Breathe deeply as you come back from the meditation. Imagine that this oxygen will help you to feel more energized. And now wiggle your toes and fingers. Take a deep inhale and a deep exhale. Now you can open your eyes and come back from the meditation. Please share this meditation with anybody that you feel could benefit from it, anybody you think would enjoy it. It really helps me out. You can also check out more of my meditations on any of my channels or by going to siluman.com. I am also available for private group and individual sessions for meditation, sound healing, and Reiki. For more information about that, just post a comment and I'll get back to you. Make sure to tune back every Monday for Meditation Monday, brought to you by the Bring Me to Life Challenge. Find out more about the Bring Me to Life Challenge by searching the hashtag or going to bringmetolife.com. Thank you, have a great day, and namaste. Okay, so that there um, was meditation. What do you think about that, Nick? 
I thought that was absolutely beautiful. It got me into a really deep state, and I really enjoyed the ways that you guided our attention to different areas that really assisted with bringing awareness and presence into those areas. Awesome. Well, I hope everybody listening enjoyed it. I do meditation videos every Monday on my YouTube and Facebook. Anybody listening, you could just search Silamon Official and I will come up. Um, so I'm glad I was able to play that for everybody. And this has been a, a really, really amazing topic. Um, is there anything else you had wanted to say or mention before we ended the discussion? Well, you, you, you had a very powerful affirmation in that meditation, and it was, I have the power to make changes that will improve my life. And presence is all good and great, and relaxing from thoughts and emotions is all nice. But then what do we do in that place besides just feel good and feel relaxed? And in our overstimulated society, adding in relaxation and things like this is definitely very, very beneficial. And then to go a step further, getting ourselves into this place and then from there deciding which actions we want to take or who we want to be, presence can really turn out to be something so life-changing getting us a better sight on how to even be ourselves. And because before all of these things that have happened to us that maybe clouds our vision or takes us out of the presence, um, we aren't really always ourselves. And returning to presence can help us better proactively make the proper decisions that we would want to make and from an empowering place. And we can always do whatever we put our mind to. And if we truly want to, we will. And if we will, we must. And nothing's going to stand in our way. And I really appreciate this topic. There's actually a ton. This is a very big topic. And, uh, I'm glad I have my notes here so we were able to <laughs> not go too tangential. And uh, yeah, so just want to say that presence can be found and revealed through deep breathing and feeling our body and potentially reviewing those contemplations again. And I would like to send everyone away with some homework that can assist yes. us in further cultivating this reservoir of presence because presence is a skill. It's Even though it's there, it's a skill because we are human and we do have subconscious habits and patterns and different neurological connections. So to assist ourselves with cultivating presence Each day, multiple times a day, we can take two to five seconds to breathe deeply and let go of all of our attention to feel presence, feeling our body, tuning into each sense, noticing that presence is the ocean. And experience is the waves. So it's much beyond thoughts. It's much beyond emotions and things of that nature. And whatever we put our focus to, we got it. So I very much appreciate you sharing that meditation because that put me in such a state that I want to sign off myself right now because I don't know if I'm going to sit here and ramble. I'm kind <laughs> of like in a very deep place. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I just, I really appreciate this topic and it's something that's very near to my heart because 
It has really opened my mind and my eyes and my heart. I love it. I love it. So I would like to say for anybody looking to get into the present moment more, maybe start off by waking up and before you grab your phone or whatever, maybe take a a second to just kind of lay there and notice how the sheets and the blankets feel. Notice what your head feels like on the pillow. Notice what kind of lighting there is. Because this morning I woke up and I knew we were going to talk about this, so I wanted to take a even just like a minute to kind of lay there and be present with everything. And I noticed the the sun was shining in the window into the hallway, and the light started doing something kind of interesting. It got brighter and darker, and it and it did that in like a pattern, and it kind of showed me that life is magical, and by being present, you're connecting to that magic and that's going to go into your life and it's going to affect your life and so by being present Mm -hmm. for just a minute in the morning and maybe even at night it like really helps you throughout if you do it in the morning helps you throughout the day if you do it at night helps you throughout your dreams so it's something everybody should try and i hope everybody really enjoyed this episode Tune in again next week as uh, Nick and I are going to talk about uh, your voice and claiming that. Um, it's all in, It's all on the topic of the month, which is claiming your power. So that's part of claiming your power is claiming your voice. So tune in next week for that. Thank you, everybody, for listening. We love you all so much. I hope you all have a great day and namaste. Thank you. Namaste. Thanks for shining on with us.